Hi everyone and welcome to The Vintage Company. I'm Julie and I'm a business historian. In every video I tell a story about a different vintage consumer product. And today I'm talking about cake. Now cake is almost always on my mind, but especially this time of year when many people I know, including myself, have birthdays. Now I have only tried to make a cake from scratch myself twice, and both times were total disasters. I'm talking a it should taste like yellow cake but ends up tasting like cornbread type situation. So I am a big fan of boxed cake mixes. And today we're going to be talking about the queen of boxed cake mixes herself, Betty Crocker. We'll talk about the origins of Betty, how she went from the voice of a flower company to her own brand, and how her image helped boxed cake mixes gain widespread acceptance. I'm Betty Crocker. With my yellow cake mix, all you do is add water and a couple of fresh eggs. The other ingredients are in the package. Same fine things you'd use right in your own home. To start, let me just say that for a very long time, I didn't know that Betty Crocker was not a real person. At first, she wasn't even an image, just a signature at the end of a letter or recipe. Betty Crocker was concocted in 1921 by advertising employees Samuel C. Gale and James A. Quint at the Washburn Crosby Company, today known as General Mills. Gale had a problem. Washburn Crosby had run an advertising campaign for its gold medal flower where it invited consumers to solve a paper jigsaw puzzle and send it back to the company for a prize. In case you were wondering, the prize was a pincushion in the shape of a gold medal flower sack. But the company got more than it bargained for of the contest. Not only did 30,000 customers send in their completed puzzles, they also sent in thousands of cooking questions. And Gail felt it was Washburn Crosby's responsibility to respond, reportedly stating, those people need our help or they wouldn't be writing. It was advertising manager and Gail's boss, James Quint, who suggested that Gail sign his replies to the letters with a woman's name. And he suggested Betty Crocker. The name was selected because Crocker was the surname of a company director, William G. Crocker, whose family had sold their milling company to Washburn Crosby in 1893. And Betty sounded friendly. Women employees around the company were invited to submit a writing sample for Betty Crocker, and the winners was used as Betty's signature. In 1924, Betty Crocker was given a voice when the Washburn Crosby Company bought a local radio show and launched Betty Crocker Cooking School on the air. One year later, Betty Crocker could be heard three times a week from coast to coast, offering advice for food preparation, housekeeping, and party and holiday planning. In a 1929 show, Betty Crocker reportedly told her audience how to make a cake which no man can resist. Its potency was established when she gave the recipe to a friend of hers who had been asked to make a cake for a church supper. The cake was such a success that a strange young man attending the supper asked to meet the young woman who made it. A few months later, they were married. Listeners, both women and men alike, could follow Betty Crocker's recipes and ultimately graduate from the radio cooking school. By the time the school ended 24 years later, over 1 million participants had earned a diploma. The original voice and face of Betty Crocker was home economist and businesswoman Marjorie Child Husted. In addition to hosting the Betty Crocker Cooking School on the air, Houston organized Washburn Crosby's Home Service Department, whose staff answered consumer questions with Betty Crocker's signature. Marjorie Houston is credited with transforming Betty Crocker from a signature to a friend and a counselor to home cooks around the country. And her likeness represented Betty Crocker until 1936 when artist Nasa McMean created a composite painting from 12 women on the Betty Crocker staff. The portrait of a brunette woman with blue-gray eyes and the hint of a dimple was met with widespread approval, and even inspired at least a dozen marriage proposals. Since then, the image of Betty Crocker has changed seven times in order to best reflect the Betty Crocker of today. 
Although Betty Crocker has been the spokes character for many General Mills products, including Gold Medal Flower and Bisquick, it wasn't until 1941 that she got a product of her own, dehydrated soup. Since then, Betty Crocker branded products have included cookbooks, baking mixes, shelf-stable entrees, portable snacks, home appliances, children's toys, and more. Dickie, are you in the kitchen? Mustn't touch the cake, I just think. General Mills was by no means the inventor of cake mix. The first cake mix was developed in the 1930s. But early cake mixes were expensive and results were variable. And some manufacturers reportedly added questionable ingredients like soap to lighten the consistency. Above all, consumers were reluctant to adopt box mixes, especially for a cake. The ability to bake a perfect cake was considered an important test of a housewife's cooking skills. So General Mills was facing an uphill battle to sell its cake mix. But who better to sway the home baker than America's trusted cooking authority, Betty Crocker? In 1947, General Mills introduced Betty Crocker Ginger Cake Mix. Advertisements read, It's a Betty Crocker recipe all measured out. Just add water, mix, and bake for fragrant golden delicious dessert that's cake luscious. Although initial sales were promising, they soon leveled off. Troubled, General Mills brought in consumer research expert Ernest Dichter to find out why. Through a series of interviews, Dichter discovered that housewives felt that cake mixes were too self-indulgent. Yes, I'm using a cake mix. It saves me a lot of trouble, but I really shouldn't. According to Dichter, telling consumers, we are producing the world's most wonderful cake mixes, try and see what delicious cakes you get, was the wrong approach. He recommended General Mills advertise cake mixes as a way to utilize one's baking talent without drudgery. With this consumer research in hand, General Mills replaced the dried eggs in its Betty Crocker cake mix and changed the instructions to require the use of fresh eggs, telling customers, because Betty Crocker knows fresh eggs mean better cakes consistently. Promotional materials also encouraged elaborate decorations, as if to make up for the simplicity of making the cake itself. The strategy apparently worked, aided by additional cake varieties. At first, Betty Crocker cake mix was available in ginger cake, then devil's food and party cake, which could result in a yellow, white, or spice cake depending on the ingredients added. In 1952, General Mills had replaced party cake with individual mixes for yellow, honey, spice, and white cake mixes, nearly doubling its available cake mix offerings. Two years later, the company launched Betty Crocker Instant Frosting Mix. Soon, Betty Crocker cake mixes reportedly accounted for more than half the cakes baked in the United States. I guarantee a perfect cake every time you bake, cake after cake after cake. Now, I am always very interested in how the ingredients of prepared foods have changed over time. So whenever I can, I try to get some vintage product packaging for whatever food I'm researching. And today is a perfect opportunity for a then and now ingredients comparison because I actually have a box of Betty Crocker white cake mix from the 1960s. So let's see what ingredients have stayed the same and which ones have changed over the decades. In the 1960s, Betty Crocker white cake mix was made of sugar, soft as cake flour, bleached, shortening with freshness preserver, non-fat dry milk, leavening, propylene glycol monoesters, and mono and diglycerides, wheat starch, salt, artificial flavor, vegetable gum, and soy lecithin. Today, Betty Crocker's white cake mix is made with enriched flour bleached, wheat flour, niacin, iron, thymine mononitrate, riboflavin, folic acid, sugar, corn syrup, leavening, baking soda, sodium aluminum phosphate, monocalcium phosphate, contains 2% or less of palm oil, cornstarch, modified cornstarch, salt, propylene glycol, mono, and diesters, dextrose, monoglycerides, non-fat milk, dicalcium phosphate, sodium steer oil lactylate, soy lecithin, whey, xanthan gum, cellulose gum, sodium caseinate, natural and artificial flavors. Two things immediately stood out to me when comparing these ingredients. First is that today's Betty Crocker white cake mix seems to be made of more ingredients than its 1960s counterparts. Second is that although both mixes included bleached flour, 
The 1960s box specifically calls out that it was made with soft as silk cake flour, while well, today's mix just lists enriched flour bleached. We'll come back to that in a moment. Other same or similar ingredients include sugar, nonfat milk, leavening, salt, artificial flavor, and soy lecithin, which is a flavor preserver. Shortening has likely been replaced by corn syrup and palm oil. Wheat starch is now corn starch. There are still propylene glycol monoesters with the new addition of diesters. And monoglycerides are still listed, but diglycerides have been removed. Now, I will freely admit that I had no idea what esters and glycerides were before working on this video, but they are emulsifiers used in food to prevent oil from separating and to extend shelf life. And vegetable gum, which is a thickener, has been replaced by xanthan gum and cellulose gum. Today's cake mix also includes dextrose, a sugar substitute, dicalcium phosphate, which could do a lot of different things, but it's most likely a leavening agent, sodium steroyl lactylate, which is another emulsifier that strengthens dough and softens crumbs, whey, sodium caseinate, a food additive derived from casein, the main protein in milk, and other natural ingredients. We can also see other differences between the two boxes. Today's Betty Crocker white cake mix includes nutrition information and serving size. Our 1960s era box does not. This offers valuable clues for what time period our vintage box was manufactured. In 1973, the Food and Drug Administration required food manufacturers to label their products with standardized nutrition information and list calories, grams of protein, fat, and carbohydrates per serving. Because our vintage packaging does not include that information, we can determine that it likely predates 1973. Our vintage packaging does include the weight and the manufacturer's name and address. This information became mandatory in 1967 as part of the Fair Packaging and Labeling Act, a law aimed at preventing manufacturers from simply increasing the box size and claiming it was jumbo or giant without actually increasing the contents. So it's likely that this vintage box of Betty Crocker white cake mix is from between 1967 and 1973. Based on other ads I've seen from the 1960s, I'm inclined to believe it's from 1967. And back to soft as silk cake flour. Soft as silk cake flour was finely milled flour developed by Washburn Crosby. In the 1960s Betty Crocker cake mix, soft as silk cake flour was one of the top ingredients. But today's mix just has enriched bleach flour. So what happened to soft as silk? In 2000, two food industry giants planned to merge, General Mills and Pillsbury. But first they had to gain approval from the Federal Trade Commission, or FTC. To ease concerns over a potential monopoly, several Pillsbury and General Mills brands were sold to international multifoods, including soft as silk. The FTC ultimately deadlocked in a 2-2 two -two vote, and General Mills was allowed to acquire Pillsbury in 2001. Since then, Soft as Silk has changed hands several times, from International Multifoods to JM Smuckers to Brentwood Partners. Today, Soft as Silk is sold under Pillsbury Baking, a company owned by Brentwood Partners Hometown Food Company, and is not affiliated with Pillsbury products owned by General Mills. It's so easy to make a cake with Betty Crocker cake mix. I'll make her another one. White cake, devil's food, yellow cake. Today, Betty Crocker has at least 24 different cake mixes, including butter pecan, carrot cake, cherry chip, dark chocolate, French vanilla, German chocolate, lemon, rainbow chip, red velvet, spice, strawberry, triple chocolate fudge, chocolate, butter recipe yellow, chocolate fudge, devil's food, milk chocolate, vanilla, white, yellow, angel food, confetti, gingerbread, pineapple upside down cake, and pound cake. In 2016, rumors began to circulate that General Mills might sell off its baking business after sales fell 6%. But those rumors remain just that. And during the COVID-19 pandemic, General Mills saw sales of its baking products, including Betty Crocker cake mixes, soar as consumers began cooking and baking more at home. In 2020, over 32 million Americans used Betty Crocker baking mixes. The company also saw increased traffic to its Betty Crocker website, as consumers looked for new recipes. 100 years after her creation, Betty Crocker is still going strong and remains a crucial source of cooking knowledge and baking inspiration. Thank you so much for watching this video about the history of Betty Crocker and her cake mixes. 
is definitely one of my favorite topics that I've covered thus far on The Vintage Company, and it's actually inspired me to bake a cake in a future video using this 1953 Betty Crocker Jr. baking kit. So I hope you'll join me for that. If you like this video and you want to learn more about the history of companies and their products, please consider leaving it a like and subscribing below. Thank you again, and I hope to see you next time. Thank you.